Hey guys, today we're going to do a dip pin nib demonstration and I have a fair assortment not only here on the tabletop but actually on my lap where you guys can't see me. And we're going to be doing this with some Windsor & Newton India ink in a dinky dip. Unless it has all dried out and then we won't be. But no, look, it's been a year and it's still managed to stay nice and fresh. And you guys can get dinky dips through paper and ink arts. So we're gonna start with a G nib. This is a Tachikawa G. It's a pretty beaten up Tachikawa G. I've used this G nib since grad school and I love this G nib. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in. I'm gonna draw a thin line and then I'm gonna draw a thick line you guys can see there's a fair amount of flex from the G nib. It's one of my favorite nibs to use. Next, we're going to use a Kurataki Seiji nib. Now, this is a spoon type nib. And you can see it is a bit of a spoon shape and this is a much finer nib Let's see if I can there we go and we're inking today on very smooth cardstock weight paper this is actually the Denik sketchbook that came in last year's Inktober you guys can see I don't really care for it because still lots of paper left. The way nibs work is they put down a deposit of ink on your paper. So they take quite a bit longer to dry than say brushes. Now this is a caged G nib, and this was ordered through Paper and Ink Arts. The cage is really just a spring, and it holds more ink. So, see, this is the cage with nothing in it. This is the cage holding ink, if my camera will focus. So, this will last longer without drying out. See how thick a line we can get with this. So the cage really makes a big difference. I feel like the Tachikawa has a little more spring. I believe this is a Nico nib and I'd love to see them offer a Tachikawa G with a cage because that would just be everything I love. So next I'm going to grab, and I have quite a collection of nibs, including some specialty nibs. But next I'm going to go ahead and grab a Browse Steno. you guys can see it's got some fins carved into it and I'm going to use this Tachikawa nib holder as you can see it's got two rings which makes it really ideal for a variety of dip pin nibs this is a very flexible nib Let's zoom in for you guys. But it doesn't necessarily hold a lot of ink. Because it's so flexible, it puts that ink down really fast. Next. 
next up, I'm going to grab, this is, I believe, a hunt nib. It's so tiny on there, but it might actually be a glot. And this is considered a croquel nib. As you can see, fits right in. And while it has some flex, it's not nearly as flexible as the steno or the G nibs. And it has a bit of an italic to it. So it's not so pointed, it's more blunt at the top. forward I have a bunch of really teeny tiny crow quills I'm not going to demonstrate all of them to you there are so many crow quills available and for me they're really kind of hit or miss not only finding one that will work but finding any that I like and these are considered mapping nibs I believe this is a hunt mapping nib and I also have some Tachikawa tank nibs which are crow quill nibs this one's really beaten up it's seen a lot of use with this little tank on the back so it'll hold a lot more ink so we're going to start I think with the little hunt and it just goes actually it does not go too well in the center of this it's a little uh, this center ring is a little too small so I find it helps to have another, an empty crow quill holder for those teeny tiny ones. So something like this, you'll often see them like this where they have basically a permanently attached crow quill. So we'll start actually with the permanently attached grow quill. And this is a speed ball. Wolf, this one has not been used in a long time. I don't know if I can get this one to work again. There we go. Sometimes they can be a little finicky. Or just not work at all. All right, that's fine. I need to toss that. I think I just keep it around for demonstration purposes for these sort of videos. So we're gonna go with a hunt nib. should but does not want to boy I don't have any luck today does not want to go in that holder will you go in this holder close enough yes and these sort of little bitty crow quills one come with numbers so the numbers are the designators Two can be very easy to spring. Three are very common in sets. So if the only access to an art supply store you have is your local Michaels, you'll be able to find these. And they're also very easy to spring and to shatter. And if you spring them, they just don't wanna work anymore. And those of you who are used to fountain pens might be able to fix it with say a loop and that way you could see how it's been sprung, but they're just so inexpensive that it's really, unless you enjoy doing it, it's just not really worth your time. So that's that little hunt crow quill. Now we've got another crow quill. Looks like a regular nib. To me, it looks a little bit like a little bitty fingernail.
probably another hunt. Whoa. What the heck is wrong with this one? This is a very, very soft crow quill that might just be ruined because I can't get it to work. Let's try this little one instead. Doesn't even want to fit in the center one. It wants to fit in the second one and then it wants to get totally lost. So let's switch holders over and see if We can't get it to work like this. There we go. And this is great. I'm very heavy handed, so this is not great for me, but these are great if you're very fine and light handed and you wanna do a lot of very light details like cross hatching or a very light line work. And you can't get a thicker line, but too much pressure will spring these little inexpensive nibs. And I found that with buying the cheap hunt nibs, you end up throwing away about half of them because they shatter or they spring and quit working. And I do know that I'm very heavy handed. So that's probably part of it. Let's sign out of crow quills with the tank. And this tank might not work because it has seen a lot of abuse. So it works on a similar principle to the cage nib. And it can also become a little finicky, although it's one of the best I've used. And if it gets a little finicky, you just sort of dab it where the tines are going in reverse so the tank is up towards the ceiling. And that'll help push your tines back together gently. I also have some brass crow quills. Again, most of these are going to be Hunt. A few of them are going to be Mitchell and Galat. And these are intended to be disposable. If you want non-disposable nibs, um, there are gold nibs, there are, I believe, titanium nibs that will last decades with proper care. But these little crow quills, they are not intended to last very long indeed. They're intended to be thrown away. So unfortunately, if you're the sort of person who doesn't like to spend money on art, supp art supplies and uh, you are buying some quills to play around with them and you're horrified and shocked when your when your brass nibs your hunt nibs start to give in and break this one is interesting it's a hunt drawing nib and it's see it's got the split tines and then it's got side fins as well and it may not want to fit in my tachikawa holder that is okay i actually have numerous nib holders which is an unfortunate necessity of inking with a nib so i can show you a couple of other kinds of holders we have a koinor holder and it's like this you've probably seen those before i don't care for these nibs can get rusted in there and then we have a cheap speedball holder which is just I can get it to focus. It's just a large center ring. So we're gonna try the Koinora holder. And the Hunt drawing is very soft because it's got those little fins. 
might do an inking test with this at some point. You gotta be delicate because like I said, those hunt nibs are just not intended to take a lot of abuse. Okay, so I have three spoon nibs here. And I'm gonna zoom in a lot so you guys can see what I'm doing. We have the Kuratake Seijin nib. We have a Tachikawa spoon. And we've got a Hunt spoon. Now they all have some basic features. The Seiji does have lines, grooves at the tip of the nib, which my camera cannot capture. And that helps it hold a little more ink than the other two. The Tachikawa is almost folded, as you guys can see, helps hold more ink. And then the Hunt, well, I don't have a whole lot. To, I'm kind of biased. I don't have a lot to say about Hunt. It's great if that's what you can get and you can't get, you can't easily try the other ones. I don't mean to make anybody watching this feel bad. I just know that um, for a lot of artists, uh, an art supply that misbehaves is often a reason not to use that supply. And I don't want anyone to get turned off of nibs because Hunt is sometimes finicky. So we're gonna start actually with the Hunt spoon nib. which isn't all that bad. It's got a little more of a bevel to the nib itself, to the top of the nib. So it's less prone to biting paper, which can be a problem because as your ink wets the paper, the metal of your nib is more prone to cut into it. And some of these nibs are very, very sharp. And that can be a problem because different inks bond to paper in different ways. We're using an India ink and India ink bonds to the paper with shellac. So this type of India ink would be waterproof, but it is not Copic marker proof because alcohol dissolves shellac. And then we're going to try the Tachikawa. much finer. And I actually find it very difficult to write with nibs if you guys haven't noticed. Get a little more line variation with the Tachikawa. That's another thing I should bring up. So um, just because one artist recommends a particular type of nib doesn't mean, or a tip, even a particular brand of nib, doesn't mean it's the ones for, it is the right choice for you. Um, I have friends who really like Seiji nibs. And they're okay. I prefer G nibs. I have friends who prefer Deleter brand nibs. I like Tachikawa um, because I'm very heavy handed. So it's really about finding the nibs that work for you and the kind of art you personally make. Although the, se the Kuratake Seiji nib is also a very nice nib. For me, I find it nips into the paper a bit much given how heavy handed I am and how impatient I am because I am not willing to wait long enough. This is another nib that I would really enjoy a cage or a tank for because I tend to run out quick. And then with cross hatching, with almost any nib you use with cross hatching, it really helps to go in one direction, let that dry fully, and then go in the other direction. I didn't let that dry fully, obviously, but you should, and that will help prevent the paper from getting torn up and the ink from bleeding into the paper, it'll help keep your lines nice and crisp. 
so I enjoy testing and collecting various types of interesting, to me, interesting nibs. So I have quite a little collection, many of which are browse nibs, which I picked up open stock from Paper and Ink Arts. So here is a Rubinato nib, and this is intended for very small writing and it has a lot of flex, but I like it for inking and I apologize. I am a huge Butterfingers this morning and all my nib holders just want to like magically fly out of my hands like I've got like a nib curse or something. So the speedball holder seems to work really well with the Rubinato and it's got all these little ridges and gullies to help hold your ink. Get it going first. What I like about this is there's a fair amount of flex and it can go from fine to fairly thick. And then that's almost everything in my little nib case over here. I have a whole bunch of nibs over here that I want to do field tests with. We'll grab a Hunt, looks like a, no, it's a Leonard. So really there is a world of variety in nibs. Whoa, this one's got a lot of splay to it. Leonard, sorry. Just a humble comic artist. But I love to try lettering nibs and old fashioned nibs, or at least I love to collect them, always with the intention of trying. But this little, this little pin has a lot of flex in it because it's got all these cutouts which make it very flexible. This is probably a phenomenal calligraphy nib. Then we have one of my favorites. This is a Browse Rose and it's called that because it has a little rose embossed on the nib. And it is very, 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 very flexible. Unfortunately, it will just drop ink on your paper as you guys are seeing right there. It's hard for me to demonstrate how thick it can get because it wants to just drop it. One of the reasons I like this nib is it doesn't really catch on the paper too badly. And then we have another little hunt nib. Have a lot of those in my collection, mainly because they're very easy to get and they come in sets and they're often kind of used as filler. Because you'll often get kind of the same hunt nibs 
in different sets. Maybe they're just multi-use. And then we also have another Leonard that doesn't want to stick in this one. So we're going to have to grab that Koenora holder. Try that. This one's a bit stiffer and it's got a nice crown shape. So a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is the more cutouts and fins on your nib, the more flexible it's gonna be, which means you can do very like a lot of variation in your line weight, but it may be very difficult to control if you're heavy handed. All right, so I think that's going to be that for our pointed nibs or our flexible nibs. I'm going to segue over into specialty nibs such as this one here, which I actually don't know what it's for. I don't think I've gotten around to testing it. It's very little nib. Oh, okay. It's a type of scroll nib. So as you can see, you can either put down a nice wide line, but it looks like it wants to do two little lines having trouble controlling the ink flow. So this may just not be the right ink for this, but this is a scroll nib, not a very good one. Then I only have Well, that's another scroll nib. This is a Mitchell scroll nib, I believe. And there's such thing as music nibs, both the um, the kind like for fountain pens where it will lay down a really thick line. See, that's a better. It's a better scroll nib. Though still not a very good one. Probably great for like really quick cross hatching now. All right, so I have one more specialty nib to show you guys. It is a brush and it is a steel brush. It's a speedball steel brush. And the dip I have in my dinky dip might not be enough, but it's made up of sandwich layers of steel and brass and it is intended to lay down really thick lines like this. It's actually very flexible. And I probably have quite a few tape nibs wiggling around somewhere but I don't necessarily feel like digging those out. Tape nibs are very similar to the brush nib in that they will do a wide swath so they're good for borders if you want to ink your entire page with nibs. They're good for borders. Now next I will do a b oh I hear my tape nibs. I will do my tape nibs first. So these are Mitchell tape nibs. As you can see, they've got little tanks on the back. And you can see this is an italic and this is a smaller italic. Hopefully you guys can see that. Do the smaller Mitchell tape nib first and then we'll do the larger one. And the tanks help ensure that you can do a longer line.
And that just fell right out of my holder. How handy for me. Let's jam that in there instead. Anyway, this probably desperately needs to be cleaned out or it means it is time for me to change out my ink, which is probably the case. And here is the wider Mitchell tape nib. And we are just about in the land of fixed with, with nibs. Yeah, I can see my ink is getting really soupy. Believe I have another India ink. So I will grab that. Switching to Daler and Rowney India ink. And we're gonna talk about A, B, C, and D nibs. And I am going to do that only with as large an example as I can find. They run in sizes zero through six, with six being tiny and zero being large. And this, if it will focus, is an A2. As you can see, or not see, it's got a square imprint. And in comics, these are typically treated, A, B, C, and D nibs are typically, typically treated as border nibs and lettering nibs. At least they were where I got my education. That might vary. Next, we're gonna grab a B, that's a B1. It's got a rounded tip. Bs are pretty popular for people who like to letter with nibs, which is somewhat falling out of favor. Since digital lettering allows for you to correct mistakes. And it can be fun to do fixed line weight letter uh, drawing as well. You're just not going to get a lot of line variation, if any, out of A, B, C, and D nibs. Next is a C nib, and I'm going to grab a C0 so you guys can really see huh, that it's like a chisel. And this is sort of like a tape nib. So great for lettering if you're going for fancier scripts because you get that thin, thin, thin line and then you also get that really wide line. And then after years of searching, I finally found a D-nib and a D-nib is an oblong and I found this through paper and ink arts. And this is a D2. So you're gonna get kind of a combination of the other nibs, but not as drastic. And that's what I have for dip pin nibs. I do have a couple of other dip pins to show you guys. I have some folded pins and I have what is called a witch pin. And we're gonna start with the Mitchell witch pin. And I don't know why it's called a witch pin. And I don't know its intended purpose either. I just thought it looked neat. And 
I'm running out of ink in my FW. So, need to refill that dinky dip. You can get thin lines, you can get thicker lines if you get a proper dip. And there's some flexibility to it as well, so you can probably force some scrolling. And this FW is just not going to work for the folded pen, so I will switch that out. For some diluter number four. So with the folded pens, you really need to be able to dip it into a larger bottle. And I've got two. I've got one, a brass one made by Danbury that was given to me as a Christmas gift by Joseph. And then another one that I picked up at Paper and Ink Arts. What the heck? My deleter number four has, hasn't spoiled, but it is greatly separated. that a good shape. And hopefully we can get something a little, no, no, it looks like it's ruined. That's weird. I have an art friend who I'm going to have to ask about that. Okay. I will grab a Sumi ink then. Kuratake black ink number 60. That one's permaclose. Let's grab the other bottle. And the neat thing about folded pens is you can get a lot of line variation. You can get use the very tip for fine, and then if you get a good enough dip, you can even do really wide lines and I like using folded pins for gesture drawing although not when I'm out gesture drawing because clearly it makes a huge mess and it takes like six years for it to dry this is the Dan Barry folded pin which is actually a little nicer than my paper and ink guards one not doing a good job picking up today Anyway, they can be a little hard to control in that you can't always get the line you want, but sometimes that's just really fun for doing gestural things. And this one is having devil of a time. So I will have to put that aside. Anyway, that is a tour de dip pins. And it's not all inclusive. Obviously, there's a bajillion nibs I don't have. And there's a lot of variation within brands and within types. Um, so I really highly encourage you to go out and explore your own. But hopefully, this will give you confidence when you're selecting your own. So I hope you guys have a great Inktober. I highly encourage you to give inking with a dip pen or multiple dip pens or multiple nibs a shot. I think you'll find it a lot of fun, although it does take practice and it does take patience. And I hope you guys will keep watching this channel for more Inktober overviews and tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching and for more information about dip pins and nibs, check out natosoup.blogspot.com. Bye guys!